Hey guys, Sonic Smash right here, and another season, another Synchron climb to King of Games successfully completed. Only this time, Quasar is actually taking a back seat for two reasons. Number one, that particular build was not changed, so profiling it again seems a bit redundant. And for two, I wanted to prove that this was still able to make it to King of Games. So, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Shooting Star Synchron. Yeah, you may notice a couple of odd things in here, and we'll get to that later. But for now, it's a blast from the past, folks. Let's take a look at Shooting Star Road. So, at the beginning of the duel, place one junk converter in your graveyard. In addition, if you control Stardust Dragon, Play Formula Synchron to the field from outside of your deck, then you can place Turbo Synchron, Nitro Synchron, and Hyper Synchron on the top of your deck from outside of your deck. Once you use this effect, you can only special summon Wind Dragon type Synchro Monsters or Warrior Synchro Monsters until the end of your opponent's next turn. This skill can only be used once per duel if you begin the duel with a deck that follows the conditions below. Your main deck must contain at least 8 in combination of Junk or Synchron Monsters and your extra deck must contain at least one Shooting Star Dragon and at least four in combination of Junk, Synchron, or Stardust Monsters. <laughs> so yeah, it's a blast from the past and Shooting Star Road is back, folks, but we need to address the elephant in the room. We are playing a little bit of a Speedroid package. So we're starting things off with Speedroid Terror Top and not the Triple Junk Synchron. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Speedroid monster from your deck to your hand, except for Speedroid Terror Top, and this is a once per turn effect. You may notice, there is only one other Speedroid we play in there, and that's Car Turbo. So we're literally using this to search for the Car Turbo, you'll see exactly why quite a few times during the replays. Next up, Triple Drunk Synchron, still the classic of classics. When normal summon, you can target a level 2 or lower monster in your graveyard, special summon it in defense, but effects are negated. You know the drill by now. Now for the Speedroid Car Turbo, there is a reason we run this. If you control the Wind Monster, you can special summon this card in your hand. Also, you cannot activate monster effects for the rest of this turn, except for Wind Monsters. You can banish this card and one Speedroid Monster from your graveyard. All Wind Monsters you currently control gain 800 attack until the end of this turn, and each effect is once per turn, not like it's going to matter. Double Junk Converter, still very nice to have. You can discard this card to M1 Tuner, add one Synchron Monster from your deck to your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard as Synchron Material, you can target one Tuner in your graveyard, special summon it in defense, but it cannot activate its effects this turn. Mainly, we're just discarding this and our Triple Junk Changer. You can only use the following effect of Junk Changer once per turn. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one Junk Monster on the field, then either increase or decrease its level by one. Spoiler alert, if you ever have to normal summon this thing, A, it's after special summoning Terror Top, and B, you're always reducing it to level two. There is a reason I played three of these, aside from the needing tuners for shooting Star Dragon, but we'll get to that later. That is it for monsters, on the spells, no traps, double book of moon, target a face up monster on the field, change it to face down defense. Believe it or not, we don't go too heavy on the anti-monster situation this time. Because in this particular build, because of the skill we use, back row is actually the bigger problem here. So in this case, we do double forbidden lance, not the one like we normally have been doing. Target one face-up monster on the field until the end of this turn, but target loses 800 attack, but it's unaffected by the effects of other spell and trap cards. And, triple cosmic cyclone, pay 1000, target a spell or trap on the field, and banish it. Hate to tell ya, but this is essentially mandatory now. Triple cosmic is a must, not just for odd eyes, but there's a lot of stuff you have to be able to banish. You need to be able to banish Toon Kingdom, you need to be able to banish... I guess Gateway to Chaos, but that's not as big of a deal. You generally need to be banishing a lot more when you are destroying stuff or becoming unaffected by other cards. Especially freaking Breakthrough Scale. 
That's a pain. The one Synchro Overtake, because yes, we play Synchro Overtake in this build instead of tuning. Reveal one Synchro Monster in your extra deck. Choose one of the Synchro Materials mentioned on it, and add to your hand or special summon that monster from your deck or graveyard, and you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the turn you activate this card, except for Synchro Monsters, and one Synchro Overtake per turn. That is the entire reason I only play the one, because as good as it is, seeing two of them... The second one's a dead card, which is why I would have loved to play an extra tuning, but unfortunately, due to the deck restrictions, I didn't exactly have the room. Next up, the double Forbidden Chalice, not triple this time. Target one face of monster on the field until the end of this turn. The target gains 400 attack, but its effects are negated. You know the drill. That is it for the main deck, onto the extra deck. Of course, the main header himself, the main event, the Shooting Star Dragon. We didn't have room for him in the Quasar build, mainly because we didn't have room for a float at all. But here, he is our main fighting force. Once per turn, you can excavate the top 5 cards of your deck, shuffle them back in, and this card's maximum number of attacks per battle phase this turn equals the number of tuner monsters excavated this way. Once per turn during either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that would destroy a card in the field, you can negate the activation and if you do, destroy that card. And once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target the attacking monster, banish this card, and if you do, negate that attack. During the next end phase, special summon this card banished by this effect. For the most part, Shooting Star is essentially, I know I can take game here or I really need to have Destruction Prevention on board. Or in some cases, Stardust Warrior is not going to help me at all. Speaking of which, we still have the Stardust Warrior. During either player's turn of your opponent with special summon monsters, not through an effect. You can trip this card and negate the summons, and if you do, destroy those monsters. During the end phase, if this effect was activated this turn and was not negated, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. And, if this card is destroyed by battle, or if this face-up card you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one level 8 or lower warrior synchro monster from your extra deck, and it's treated as a synchro summon. With this build, that does not matter. Of course, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, kind of a polarizing card at this point. Once per turn during either player's turn, when another monster's effect is activated, you're going to get the activation, and if you do, destroy that monster. And if you do that, this card gains attack equal to the destroyed monster's original attack until the end of this turn. If this card battles a level 5 or higher monster your opponent controls during damage calculation, this card gains attack equal to the attack of the monster it is battling during that damage calculation only. Yeah, bit of a polarizing card, this one. Two Stardust Dragons. Yes, two. There is a reason for this, and I'll talk about that in a second, but first, the effect. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that would destroy a card in the field, you can trip this card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. And during the end phase, if this was activated successfully, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. There is one reason I play two of these things. Technically, it doesn't come up as often as it used to, but the fact that it can come up at all still is a pain. Rockets. If they go Booster Dragon, have Silver Rocket on the field, and banish your Stardust, you're screwed unless you have a second one. You actively need two purely for Rockets if they go first. Otherwise, there goes your win condition. There goes one of your big effects. There goes essentially the main reason for Shooting Star Road existing in the first place. Because if you're only playing one Stardust Dragon and they rip it, they've essentially locked you out of two of your other extra deck monsters, and you're exclusively relying on Crystal Wind. We don't want to be in that situation, ever. Brianna Dragon of the Ice Barrier. There is a reason for this, and it's purely because we play the Terror Top. The Terror Top can actually make Brianna useful. You can discard any number of cards to the graveyard, then target the same number of cards your opponent controls, and return them to the hand. Once per turn, but the fact that you can bounce is so good. If you can force a situation where, say, Tenyi does not have their Link 3 on board because they burnt their targeting in the gate hand trap, or, for example, if they don't have it at all, which is rare by the way, 
Getting rid of their link 3 with them having no cards in hand is huge. And of course, the classic himself, Junk Warrior. He is exclusively here for two reasons. Number one, to fulfill the Shooting Star Road requirement. And number two, to be a Synchro Overtake target. If this card is Synchro Summoned, it gains attack equal to the total of the attack all level 2 or lower bosses you currently control. Completely useless. We're just here to use this thing for an Overtake target and the Shooting Star Road requirement. That is literally it. And speaking of which, believe it or not, Shooting Star Dragon here can be an Overtake target as well because he specifically needs Stardust Dragon, so keep that in mind. It's fun when that comes up, by the way. But last but not least, High Speed Raid Hagoida. During either player's turn, you contribute this card, increase the level of all monsters currently on the field by one until the end of this turn. If this card is in your graveyard and you control a Speed Raid Tuner monster, you can special summon this card. Also, you can not special summon monsters for the rest of this turn, except for wind monsters, and each effect is once per turn. Or at least the freaking... special summon effect. I could have swore the... tribute effect was once per turn, but apparently not. Not like it matters, you're only using it once anyway. But anyway, that is it for the main deck and the extra deck. Let's talk about a couple of alternatives you can use. First things first, Junk Destroyer. When this card is Synchro Summoned, you can target cards on the field up to the number of non-tuner monsters used for the Synchro Summon of this card and destroy those targets. Extra back row removal, always good. Back row is a pain in the neck. Junk Servant. I have tried this, but it's a bit inconsistent. If you control a Junk Monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. There is a reason I've tried this, and it's okay. Hey, but the problem became I would often see Converter and Servant and not say Converter and Changer or Changer and Servant. And when I see Junk Synchron, the Servant's literally useless without Junk Archer. Speaking of which, Junk Archer. Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls and banish it. During the end phase of this turn, return it to your opponent's field in the same battle position. Mainly if you're playing the Servant, but even then I wouldn't recommend it that much. It's just okay. Of course, if we look into spells... I believe this is what we want. Where are you? Where are you? There we are, tuning! Add one Synchron Tuner monster from your deck to your hand, then send the top card of your deck to the graveyard. Just an extra searcher, you can't really go wrong with this. And last but not least, a card that is very underestimated for no reason? Necroid Synchro! Banish one tuner and up to two non-tuner monsters from your graveyard, and if you do, special summon one Stardust Synchro monster from your extra deck, whose level equals the total levels of those banished monsters, but it has its effects negated, and this is treated as a Synchro Summon. Don't underestimate this thing. In a pinch, this can get Stardust Dragon out for you. Which means you can go shooting Star Road, which means shooting Star Dragon, which means fun times all around. So, if you want to give this a shot, go for it. Don't underestimate this thing. It can be surprisingly useful in a pinch. But with that, it is on to the replays. And as usual, there is one bonus replay I'd like to show. Let's just say there's a reason I think Mon Illuminates has to get hit now. 
if it wasn't getting hit before, there's no escaping it this time. We're not actually playing against Synchron Quasar here, folks. Witness the bond with my cards. We're dealing with our Sarctix. Yeah, annoyingly enough, once again, no one is using the skill correctly. It's my turn. I activate my monsters. Okay. And honestly, I don't even pay attention to any of these names because Ursarctics are just all the same to me. So he goes straight for the Cider Dragons, right? Fortunately, he got RDA and Blackwing. I say fortunately because otherwise, uh... Yeah, Crystal Wing, Stardust, anything like that could have come out. So, unfortunately, I brick pretty hard here. Flip the Synchro Chase, even though it's not going to matter. And as soon as he attacked with Black Wing, I knew who to lance. So we're holding on by 300 life points, and then Claremont kicks in. Got the overtake, and it's just over. And so I decide to literally flex on this guy. Yeah, I used my one overtake, so I may as well flex with some Junk Warrior. Let's rev it up. Never gets old. Junk Warrior gains the attack of my I Admittedly, it's kind of nice to be playing Junk Warrior again. The tuner monster so we just continue along to Stardust Dragon, and you pretty much know how this goes. We're going to see Stardust more often later, so I'll let the full thing play out properly a little bit later in this climb. This one was just a bonus replay against our Sarctix with the Bond Illuminate skill. Because, uh, yeah, the skill needs to get hit already. Lock it to you, say cards, please. Has power waiting to be unleashed. Board completely power. broken. What do you do about that? You just lose at that point. So on to the climb proper. To remind everybody of how this works, to hit King of Games from Legend 5, you have to win 5 straight games in a row. Now they made this a bit more lenient, and you have to lose 4 games in a row to rank down. Unfortunately, yeah, as you can see, my luck has not we gone so well with, with this. This took me well over 20 attempts, purely because, in all honesty, I'm gonna say it right away, I think shooting Star Road so I'll take is it just infinitely Ooh. worse than Quasar Belt. So we're dealing with Red Eyes, and uh, in typical Red Eyes fashion, it's back row reliant, but I don't know what happened here. No Red Eyes roulette, no nothing, so I guess he bricked? I activate my monster's effect. The tuner monster jump. I activate my monster's effect. Okay. I and okay. he hesitated I here. I don't know monster. why he hesitated here, but... <laughs> Perfect. 
yeah, what you're seeing is the main combo. I'll explain it more in detail in a second. But he hesitated, and I guess he was scared of the Crystal Wing? And completely ignored the fact that I went with Hakoida. I'll explain the combo when it becomes a bit more relevant. Because I have to question, like, what was his logic here? If you just book the converter... Was he scared of Lance or something? I'm not sure. I'll play the animation properly when the time comes, because uh, the time will come soon enough. And, uh, who plays Mirror Force anymore? Just saying. And this is why I love playing Stardust and Shooting Star back in... Dual Transer. Surely to stop Mirror Force. Bonk. So, this next game coming up is when I'll explain the combo, because... It becomes especially relevant here. Oh boy, Playmaker, and you know what that means? Definitely not Salad Talker or Co-Talker alive in any way. No, it's three effects with a splashably broken deck. In this case... A duelist ju with my cards and my friends by my side, I can't lose. Are you sure you can win this, Playmaker? Never doubt me, I. Let's go! Duel! Duel. My turn! From my hand! Three of Vex or Kissed! Come out! I summon a monster! I activate my monsters! Go, Playmaker! And so, yeah. Simple Skeleton. Raid Raptor, I believe that's Stranglenius, yep. Galatea, three effects. He got pretty unlucky, if I'm gonna be honest. And goes into Tengirsu like that, really? Okay, so here's how the combo works. Also, Cosmic actually was preferred to get rid of the back row and not the babble this time. Because I knew with this combo, it wasn't going to matter. If you don't have Car Turbo, you're going to Special Summon Speedroid Terror Top to search the Car Turbo. Then, assuming you have the full combo, all you need is Junk Synchron and Car Turbo. You're going to Normal Summon your Junk Synchron. That causes the effect to activate, bringing back your Junk Converter from the Graveyard from the start of the duel. Use the Junk Synchron and the Junk Converter to Synchro Summon High Speedroid Hagoida. Then you're going to use Junk Converter's effect to bring the Junk Synchron back to your side of the field as you normally would. At this point, you want to Special Summon Speedroid Car Turbo. Then you're going to use the Junk Synchron and the High Speedroid Hagoida to Synchro Summon Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Now alternatively, what you can do if you want to use the Brianak line is Junk and Terror Top go Brianak. Discard some cards to bounce some stuff, and then play the car turbo and go from there. But, at this point, because we control a speedroid tuner, we're gonna bring back high speedroid Hagoida, using it and the car turbo, to synchro summon Stardust Dragon. Now here's the real fun part. At this point, we trigger shooting Star Rail. What we do, A, depends on the situation, and B, also depends on if we open the one overtake and haven't had to use it yet. If you can't get away with it and you just want to flex, you go Stardust Warrior, Synchro Overtake, reveal the Shooting Star Dragon to bring the Stardust Dragon back to your field. But here, we're going to place the three tuners on top 
Clear Mind, Excel Synchro, Shooting Star Dragon. Thank you for referencing the original version of that summon animation, by the way, but Dub ruined that. Make no mistake, the Dub for 5Ds is incredible, but... Uh, story-wise, it got hit pretty hard. Oh, and sadly, no 5 attacks. It is a drug when you get the full Shooting Star Dragon 5 attacks off. Like, that is catharsis right there. So, no matter what he did, because I opened this combo, Crystal Wing is going to cover me here. I attack you directly. I activate my monsters Simple Skeleton tries to bring back with Ingearsu. How about no? Your dueling was impressive. As yeah, get out of here. Just saying, dude. Like, yeah, I know he got kind of unlucky with his hand, but it's Orcus. Who cares? And if you think we're done with Orcus, you've got another thing coming. Because next up is... Each card has Let's rev it up. Spoiler alert. <laughs> There's Dark Magician Orcus. Great game. Duel. It's my turn. I activate my monster. So in this case, we use the converter to pitch the Junk Changer and search Junk Synchron. Because we already have the car turbo, you know how this goes. Junk Synchron's effect. I'm counting on you. I need your help. I synchro summon a monster. I activate my monster's effect. The Tuner Monster I activate my monsters of I'm counting on I, I set a Yeah, I got a really lucky streak of I car turbo showing up. I activate my monsters of I'm counting on you. The hopes of the world. Now in this case, just leave the formula synchron on board and don't put the tuners on top. If you do, you're essentially bricking your next draw. Still love that animation. Never gets old. The bond. I end my turn. This is fine for the most Looks part. Summon Magician's Rod tries to activate. Crystal Wing says no. And I just have the gut feeling he has a Prentice Illusion in hand. Like, this is purely a gut feeling, okay? Yeah, called it. And he doesn't even try to get an Orcist on board, which is interesting, even though he easily could have. It's go time. My turn. I draw. I may have lost, but I still love my cards. This is Yeah, I'm pretty sure he just didn't want to deal with it at that point. So, next up we have Destiny Effect. I'm not even calling it Destiny Hero, because really, it's Destiny Effect playing the game for you. And times like this are why I love me some Speedroid Terror Top. I'll prove that nothing and no one I've already won. Duel! This came in clutch. 
like actually clutch. I activate my monster's effect. The tuner monster junk synchro junk synchron's effect. I need your help. I okay. I synchro summon a monster. I activate my monster's effect. Yeah, I got pretty lucky for the most part, and this thing just kept showing up. So this is honestly a pretty okay end board. Not great, but I'll make do with it. I was really hoping to hold that lance, but I had to take no chances. I mainly just choose to stop that for the simple reason of, honestly, I didn't want him getting an Xyz on board. Because for some reason, Destiny Effect lets you use freaking Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. And yeah, turns out that was the right call. So Dystopia comes out, you know the drill with this thing. And at this point, yeah, Stardust Warrior wasn't going to help me. So we're going for the Clear Mind Excel Synchro play here. Sets one gets baited by the most basic bait possible because people keep forgetting that Shooting Star has destruction prevention. And he knows all too well not to risk this here, so, uh, malicious. Drawing the Junk Changer, I specifically choose not to go for the Brianek here, even though I could have. Because no cards in hand means this is going to do more damage. Yeah, worst case is he'd crack down my Crystal Wing and get rid of that. were defeated. Forgive me, Dad. The power of my bond over yours was the determining factor. If it was compulsory, no big deal. I had enough damage to go around anyway. It would have had to be cracked down, and he would have had to grab Crystal Wing. But now, a game that was essentially prolonged by me guessing entirely wrong here. Going second against Hero Alliance. Uh I will have a fun duel. I know you love duel. Here I go. Let's go. Right away, the Neos. Yeah. Which means you know he was fishing for Super Poly. I throw down a face down. So, I guessed horribly wrong. The Super Poly is dead center. Unfortunately, the one time where Changer showing up really doesn't help me. I don't know about that. I'll play my face down card. 
So here was just a case where I had no choice but to play a bit aggressively here. But you'll notice I do one specific thing. The Tuner Monster Junk Seek! The hopes of the world coalesce into a single star! Let's rev it up! Take flight! Stardust Dragon! I brock shooting Star Road here, but I don't actually do anything with it. Reason being, I'm trying to force the Super Poly. Monster buddies and I have an unbreakable bond. I activate my quick play spell. Check this out. And to no one's surprise, he falls for that great tornado. Now, I activate my monster. Here I go. I draw. This will do. I summon a top deck liquid soldier. Miracle fusion. And purely uses it to get the extra draw. And brings out. Elemental Hero Core. I activate my monster's effect. You're not the only one full of surprises. I flip over my face down card. I activate a quick play spell. Battle. Go. Attack. I end my turn. I purely wanted it's that thing card. face down because I wasn't my taking any chances. I draw. I'll set a card. The Tuner Monster Junk Synchron. Junk Synchron's effect. Even the tiniest scrap has value. And this monster will prove it. Synchro Summit! Appear, Junk Warrior! And yeah, he knew Crystal Wing was coming at that point. Without a Super Poly to get rid of it, this would have been a long game he just didn't want to deal with. So he just scooped for some reason, even though he could have lived. He would have lived, even. But I mean, hey, that did it. I'm not going to complain, it did it. Just a bit weird. So, yeah. Shooting Star Synchron, folks. If you want my honest opinion, it is objectively worse than the Synchron Quasar build with Bond Illuminates, the Jet and Doppel combo and all that. That build is significantly better than Shooting Star Synchron. I say this for a couple of reasons. That build at least has some ways to play resilient. If you can at least force a situation where even though you got disrupted, you still have your normal summon, you can still play. You really want to, and you'll always have the option to do so most of the time. With this, you're not so lucky. You have to burn your normal summon really early. Thus, you are way more prone to getting back row hate for no reason whatsoever. Additionally, as good and oppressive as the ceiling for this end board can be, you don't have a follow-up play that often. Very rarely do you ever. So it's like, if your Crystal Wing and Stardust Warrior go down, what exactly do you have left? Not much, really. Whereas with the Bond Eliminates build, you always have access to the Crystal Wing, Stardust Warrior, and Board, sure, but you also have Stardust Dragon into the Bond Eliminates combo for Quasar, you have Quasar in general, who's just more oppressive in terms of the gates. Which means you can go all out on stopping monster effects, because those can be a bigger deal to that particular build. And as a whole... You just have a better situation most of the time. Now, is this build solid? Yes. Is it fun? Absolutely. It is fun to make use of this. Especially if you get the Junk Synchron Car Turbo Overtake combo. That is so satisfying to get. I wish I could have showed it off here. 
But, oh well, what can you do? Now, would I recommend this? If you are not quite ready to play Bond Illuminates yet, this is a good starting point for Synchro. But once you've mastered it, Bond Illuminates, in my honest opinion, is going to be better. Granted, that skill is going to get hit pretty hard with the fact that a lot of other stuff is just abusing it. Looking at you, Ursarctic. But nonetheless, honestly, both builds can work. Both skills work pretty well at what they do. So in all honesty, I do have fun with both of these builds. Personally, I would not recommend shooting Star Road over Bond Illuminates, but that's just me. If you want something more simplistic, sure, go right ahead. It can work. It's just really difficult, especially in this format. If you run into 3 effects Tengi, and they've got all their hand traps engraved, or in hand, you're gonna have a problem. But that's really all I can say for this video. Until the next one, whenever it may be. Later, guys.